In this video, I want to talk about a Django login, registration, and logout system. I always forget how to do this, so I want to lock it down in my mind and at the same time share it with you. So to begin, the first thing you might want to do is do this Django-admin start app accounts. That will create a new accounts directory within your Django project. This is where you could create it by editing the views, create a form, and so on. We're not going to do that. I'm going to say delete. What I'm going to do instead is start out in this order. URLs, forms, views, and templates. So let's get started. Enough talk. Let's start out with URLs first. I'm going to do it in the main project here, this directory. We open up URLs. This is what we have. So we know we need three different URLs. And a lot of this is going to be copy paste. And just to give you reference on where I kind of learned this, go check out Justin Mitchell's e-commerce um, course. It's an incredible course. You're going to learn a lot. So you start out with login, register, and log out. These are three different URLs we want to go to to perform these actions. We have these different different views here. So let's go ahead and import those in right now. Login, page, register, page, and log out page. Those don't exist yet. So we did the URLs. Let's go to the forms. So we have this forms.py. What we want to do here is we first need a form for our log in. That's what this is here. It is simply login form at subclasses forms.form and it has username and password. So these are both char fields or character fields. The first one uses a widget, text input widget. The second one uses a password input widget. And then it's just passing some bootstrap classes into it just for styling purposes. After we do that, we want a form for our registration. And this one is really pretty cool. This is the bare bones for what you would need to know about registering when, you know, when you're doing some validation. So these forms are trying to validate the data that's coming through. That's what these methods here are for. So I'll talk about it now. We have username. That's using a widget. Just a, It's a field, char field, with a text input widget, just like username. Email. This is using an email input widget. Password first. So the idea here is the user is going to enter a password first, and then they're going to do it again, just to make sure the password is correct. In that scenario, you need to make sure the first and the second password matches. So that's where this clean method comes in. DEF clean. Pass in self. We get the cleaned data from the form. And then we just assign password one to clean data dot get because clean data will be a dictionary. We want to get the password underscore first value, and then the second value down here. And then we say if basically if these don't equal each other, if they're not the same thing, then we need a raise of forms dot validation error and say the passwords don't match. If everything is good, if this doesn't fire, then the passwords match and we return the cleaned data. Now let's talk about the username. So people could try to enter a username that already exists. That's also where this clean underscore and then the field name here. This is a Django convention. You can use clean underscore and then the name of one of these fields here. And then what do you want to do with it? So we say username equals self.cleanData.get. So we're just, again, getting it from the clean data. We grab username from the dictionary, that will be a string. And then we want to say, 
user.objects.filter username equals username. And this is a QS for query string. That's what that kind of stands for. You might be wondering where this user comes from. Up here at the top, we are importing get underscore user underscore model from django.contrib.auth. And then we just assign user with a capital U equal to get user model. And then now we have a user object. But we're just trying to see basically if this user name exists. So if the query string dot exists, then we need to raise a forms.validation error again. The username you've chosen is not available. And if that doesn't happen, then we're just going to return username. Because that means it doesn't exist. And then the last thing we want to check for when doing registration form validation is if the email exists. So it's kind of the exact same thing. Same thing. We check if it exists. So I'll just go through it again. We get it from the, the cleaned data. We create a query string or a query set, sorry. And then we see if that email address exists. If it exists, we raise a form.validation error. This email address already exists. If it doesn't, we return the email address. So those that's the forms. Now let's move on to the views. So I will talk about the login view first. Let's paste this here. Login underscore page. That's the name of the view. It takes in the request. And then this is where we get the form that we just created. So up here, let's import login form and register form. So the first step is the form is e equal to the login form. And we're checking to see if the request has post data. If it doesn't, then we're just returning none. And if you look at the parameters of this, the first parameter is asking for data. So we either give it data or data equals none by default. So it'll be or none. Okay, so then from here we just say this is our context dictionary that you pass usually into a render view, and then we just pass it in. We just set form is equal to form, the actual form object. And then for for you know just seeing what's in it, you can print the request dot user dot is authenticated. So we're trying to see if the user is authenticated or not, meaning they're already logged in or not. So then we just say if the form is valid, then we want to print the clean data just to see what the dictionary looks like. And then we say username equals form.cleanData.get username. And then we do the same thing for the password. And this is where we have this authenticate. Um, I think it's a method or it's a class. I'm not really sure what it is. Let's see here. Dot authenticate. Yeah, I can't. I don't know why I can't see it there. But anyways, authenticate lets you pass in some data. So you pass in the request, the username, and the password. Let's see here. So these are basically the cr credentials. And this will create a user object. And then we just say if user is not none, we probably really need to know what this authenticate is. So Django authenticate method. So is it a method? And then it says returns none there. That's probably a good thing. So let's look for authenticate. Okay, so here it is. Authenticate it takes in the request and then the credentials. So what does it mean by credentials? Use authenticate to verify a set of credentials. It takes credentials as keyword arguments. 
username and password for the default case. So keyword arguments, the username equals username and password equals password. We're just getting these from the form and we're trying to validate them to see if we can authenticate the user. Now, I think this is an important part. If credentials aren't valid for any backend or if backend raises permissions denied, it returns none. So for example, here it is. If user is not none, and that's kind of what we're doing here. So if user is not none, else, blah, blah, blah. So if user is not none, meaning we were able to authenticate the user, then we want to log them in. That's where this login method comes from. So we log in, we pass in the request, and then we pass in the user. Let's take a look at that real quick. Login, it takes in a request, and it takes in a user, and an optional backend if you would like. That's what we see here. So these are examples from the documentation themselves. And then you could return a redirect to, in this case, take them to the home page. A redirect is imported from django.shortcuts. There you go. So if it was none, then I'm just printing an error here. And you could figure out how to handle that. So then at the end of this, we just say render request. We are putting the templates in this auth slash login.html, and then we are passing in our context here. So the order in which these things happen within this view is very important. So to, to make sure that we actually have a template, I'm going to say a new directory. We'll call it auth. Then inside of auth, I'm going to create a new HTML file. We're going to call it login.html. We're not going to worry about tracking it right now. And let's actually put the HTML template in there. So I'm saying it extends base.html, which is this one. This is a Django template language thing. And then we just say block content. That's a specific block of area within my base.html that this form will be rendered. So the form method is post. And that's why in the views right here, we are looking for request.post data. So then we, all, we always pass in this CSRF token for middleware. And then we just say form.asp. And keep in mind, our form is passing in bootstrap classes. So it should look OK. Lastly, we give it a button. And there you go. So we have that. Let's close that. Let's also tackle the registration. For registration, we, it'll look something like this. The register page takes in a request. We pass in the register form from forms.py. Then we do the same thing, context. And we just say, if the form is valid, username equals, get the username from the dictionary, email equals, the email from the dictionary, password equals that. And then we just say user from importing it here, dot objects dot create user. And we pass in the username, email, and password. We assign it to a new user, but this actually isn't used anywhere in this. So if you wanted to, you didn't actually have to do that. Just to prove it. Let's just remove that and we'll see what happens. So then we render the request and we're putting it to this template here, register.html. Or I should say we're getting it from register.html. So HTML, register.html. I'm going to do the same thing for the form. It doesn't make a difference in this case because we're still passing form right here into the context. So theoretically, you could use the same, the same HTML form. And then lastly, let's talk about the log out system real quick. This will be 
very easy. This is the logout. It's just logout page, take in the request, logout. So we're importing logout from django.contrib.auth. And then we just return a redirect. We log them out using just the request and we return this redirect. Okay, so everything should be good to go. Okay, so that is the base.html. Let's refresh this. This is where we can log in. Let's log in with the admin user. And here we go. User admin is logged in. The reason it says that is in here we're saying if request.user is authenticated, then we want to say user, and then the request.user is logged in. Now let's go ahead and log out. Let's log in. And this time we'll just have an incorrect password. We do it. We don't see anything happen. We go to the home page. This user is not authenticated at all. The reason is in our forms here, we didn't really do anything for our login. We didn't say like if the login is valid or anything, we just have two fields, right? So it's not going to do anything. But let me show you logging in. There we go. Now let's go to logout and we're going to go to register. So we have this form here. I'll try to register as admin. Admin at admin.com. Password is ABC. ABC. Login. So the first thing we get is this the username you've chosen is unavailable. Okay, so what if I said admin one? And then let's say admin at admin. And here I'm going to say ABC and then ABCD. We say login. And now we get this validation the passwords don't match. So it's looking at our views, or actually our forms here, and it's trying to validate it, saying these passwords don't match right here. And we've also seen this username you've chosen is unavailable. And lastly, we could say the username is the email address is already taken. So I'm not really sure what the email address is. It might be this ABC, ABC. We'll say login. And it says the email address you've chosen. So those are the three validations here on this form. So let's actually just create a user. So we'll just say um, user one. We'll say ABC at ABC, ABC, ABC. Enter a valid email address, of course, dot com. And then we do ABC, ABC, login. So I guess that was another point worth mentioning. I didn't have to say like the email has to have an at symbol in it. Django handled that form validation for me. So there is additional things that you don't have to define. Now let's go into the admin panel. Let's log in. We're going to go to users. We could see this user here, user one. We just created it. So that pretty much covers it for a Django login system. It showed you how to log in, register, and how to log out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope you learned a lot. I'm going to be posting a lot of these types of videos. So if you want to support me early on, definitely subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.